We believe that the King James Bible is the perfect, pure words of God, and all other Bibles are wrong. The reason why is because if you don't believe in a perfect Bible, perfect book, how do you know that the verses that's giving the doctrine is correct? That's right. One word can make a big difference. So a lot of people don't think that different Bibles are an issue, but the Bible shows that it is a big issue. Now what I'm going to prove to you is that Satan is the author of modern Bibles. That's right. Now for some people who this is a first time, they might think that that's kind of extreme. But I'm going to show you through the scriptures that he must be. <clears throat> so the first thing is this. The first thing that we can all agree with is that God never lies. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. If we make God a liar, I mean, what kind of spirit would make God a liar? So what we're going to do is look at these passages. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter 3. We're going to start with this verse. Hebrews chapter 3. <clears throat> and then we will read verse 15. Verse 15, and we will read all the way down to verse 17, verses 15 through 17. Now, if you know your story in the Bible, that the children of Israel who came out of Egypt, that they disobeyed God and they sinned against Him. So God had to kill a large number of Israelites. But there were a few, there were some who stayed faithful to the Lord, and they stuck in the promised land. They were able to enter into the promised land. We're going to first start with verse 15. While it is said today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. So there were some of the Jews who provoked the Lord. They messed up. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses... But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sin, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? So there's these group of Jews whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and they sinned against the Lord. But these people, you'll notice right here in verse 16, the King James Bible words perfectly, Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So that's true. Not everyone came out of Egypt safely and entered into the Promised Land. However, what you're going to find out is that in the New Bibles, including the New King James Version, when you read Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15 through 17, it says this, How many of them that provoked the Lord, and how many of them uh, were not able to enter the Promised Land, the verse actually reads that all of them that came out of Egypt... All of them that came out of Egypt provoked the Lord to anger. They were the ones that disobeyed the Lord and their carcasses were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, use some uh, Sunday school common sense if you know the story. Did God kill every single Jew out there and none of them entered the promised land? No, but the new Bibles show that. Whereas the King James Bible, it just simply says from the verse that not everyone... So there were some of them, such as Joshua and Caleb, who entered the promised land safely, if you look at that passage. So if you look at this verse, it mentions right here that all of the people, they died in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to look at the book of Mark chapter 1 now. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. So we're going to compare several verses right here. Mark chapter 1. So, God doesn't lie, but we see here that God lied once. Now we're going to look at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. We'll see that God has lied again in the new Bibles. Now, most new Bibles make this error, actually. Most new Bibles. We're going to look at Mark chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 2 through 3. Verses 2 through 3. Here's the second error. Mark chapter 1, verses 2 through 3. As it is written in the who? Prophets. So it's a plural, right? It's a plural form. It's not singular. You'll, uh, in the modern Bibles, though, it'll say as it is written in Isaiah. It doesn't say prophets. Now, why is that a problem, preacher? Because keep reading. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So that's quoted by Isaiah. Mark chapter 1, verse 2. Now, the next verse, verse 3, 
uh, excuse me, uh, the first part of verse 2 is not quoted by Isaiah. That part was quoted by Malachi. It was quoted by Malachi. And then when you look at verse 3, that was quoted by Isaiah. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now look at Mark 1, 2, and 3 again. So then, verse 2 was quoted by Malachi, and then verse 3 was quoted by Isaiah. Thus, the King James Bible says it's written in the who? Prophets, right? Prophets. Does that look like one or does that look like prophets? Prophets, yeah, prophets okay? It's plural. Now, if you look at the modern Bibles, what did they say? Isaiah. It doesn't say prophets, so they made God a liar again. Go to 2 Chronicles 35, and then we'll look at 1 Kings 23. All right? 2 Chronicles 20, uh, 35, 35, and 2 Kings 23. 2 Kings 23 and 2 Chronicles 35. Now, your New King James Version is also going to mess up here. And the Bible, it does not have contradictions in them. It does not have contradictions. However, what I don't like about the modern Bibles is that they make... The passages in the Bible contradict each other, and they make God a liar, which we obviously don't believe that Jesus Christ is a liar. What spirit would drive them to make God a liar? Just makes you wonder. Okay, let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 35. Look at verse 20. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. Okay, uh, we see right here in the King James, Necho, king of Egypt, went up against Carchemish by Euphrates. Went up against Carchemish by Euphrates. Now keep your hand here, okay? Go to uh, 1 Kings 23. 1 Kings chapter 23. Now, look what the Bible says right here. We're going to look at 1 Kings 23 now. Now, it's going to repeat the same story. It's going to repeat the same story. We're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 23. Uh, 2, 2 Kings 23, verse 29. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See, you all shouldn't believe your pastor now. <laughs> you all should check out the verses yourself. <laughs> Heretic already. <laughs> all right, 2 Kings chapter 23. We will read verse 29. In his days, Pharaoh Necho, remember 2 Chronicles 35? Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates. It's repeating the same story. Remember 2 Chronicles 35. Necho went up against Carchemish by the river Euphrates. First King, 2 Kings 23 says, Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria, Carchemish, by the river Euphrates. Now, if you look at the modern Bibles, what they do is that it actually says, went up to the aid of the king of Assyria. Opposite. Opposite. Total opposite. Well, then these two passages contradict each other then. So whether he went to the aid or he went against, it doesn't matter. These two passages contradicted each other. Now, go to the book of 2 Samuel 21. 2 Samuel 21. So we see right here that God lied again. There's a contradiction. He went to the aid. Your Bible never said that. The King James Bible never said that. It said he went up against. All right, 2 Samuel 21. Yep. One of the most infamous passages that scholars <laughs> have a hard time. A lot of you know this. So you know what question I'm going to ask. Who killed Goliath? Who killed Goliath? David, right? David's brother. Who <laughs> yeah, David's brother, yeah. Who was it? Elhanan. You know? <laughs> Look at 2 Samuel chapter 21. 2 Samuel chapter 21. Look at verse 19. Verse 19. Okay, then. We'll see right here. A big problem. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, 
the son of Jeri Oregem, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite. So notice right here, El Hanan in the Bible killed the brother of Goliath the Gittite. However, what we're going to see right here is that it contradicts the Bible when you look at uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 20. Look at the book of 1 Chronicles. Notice that there's a contradiction here. We're going to look at 1 Chronicles chapter 20. So, the modern Bibles, it says that El Hanan killed not the brother of Goliath, but killed Goliath. Now, obviously, that's a no-brainer. We know for a fact that El Hanan uh, did not kill Goliath. It was David. El Hanan killed the brother of Goliath. But whether you want to say El Hanan held hands with David, and I guess they were running around the, the place, and then they threw the sling together or something, it contradicts right here 1 Chronicles chapter 20. And we will read verse 5. And there was war again with the Philistines, and El Hanan, the son of Jair, slew Lami, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. See that? El Hanan killed the brother of Goliath. And guess what? The modern versions contradict each other by saying that uh, El Hanan killed the brother at 1 Chronicles, and then 2, King, uh, 2 Samuel, and they said, no, El Hanan killed Goliath. I mean, like, what in the world, man? <laughs> what in the world? So you'll see right here that they made a lie again. So basically, El Hanan killed Goliath. Imagine teaching Sunday school. Who killed Goliath? And the kids say, David. And you say, no, it's El Hanan. <laughs> I mean, the kids will look at you like you're weird, like you're dumb. But unfortunately, scholars think they can get away with it, and they don't look dumb. Yeah. Oh, who killed Goliath? David. No, it's El Hanan. The kids will even look at you like you're funny. Yeah. You have to be a scholar to get educated out of this. Alright, All right, we're also going to look at the book of John, chapter 7. John, chapter 7. John, chapter 7. We'll look at verse 6. Verse 6. So Jesus Christ doesn't lie, but unfortunately modern Bibles make Jesus a liar. Oh, one word does not make a big difference. Absolutely one little word makes a big difference in the entire world. Look at John chapter 7. We will read verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Now look at verse 8. Go ye up unto this feet, I will go not up yet. You see that? I will not go up yet unto this feet. For my time is not yet full come. Okay, so meaning that Jesus Christ is not going yet. He's going to go later. Did he? Yes. Because look at verse 9. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were, in secret. So notice that Jesus, he did go later. So Jesus Christ specifically said that he's not going yet. But you know what the modern Bibles did? They dropped the word yet. And by dropping the word yet, they actually said this. Jesus said at verse 8, I go not up unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. And then what happens? Then in two verses later, he goes up to the feast. So Jesus lied. Jesus lied to his disciples then. Is your Jesus Christ, is Jesus Christ a liar, folks? No. no. Jesus Christ is not a liar. But the modern Bibles, they make your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ a liar. Now, why would you have Bibles that lie? That's right. Why is Satan the author? Go, go to John 8, the very next chapter. It's like, how can you be a modern Bible translator who lies like that, in the very next chapter, you just go blind ignorant on who's the father of lies. Now look at John chapter 8. Now what did Jesus Christ say about the devil, about that wicked one? Well, he is the father of lies. Look at verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. See, the father of the devil. The lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. See that? 
uh, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the what? Father of it. Satan is what? The father of lies. Yes? yes. Is that what John 8, 44 said? Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you a very simple question. If God is not the father, the author of these lies, then who is? Hey. Let's be honest. It's Satan then. That's why modern Bibles are of the devil. Amen. you got to understand. And when people say that, we're not being extreme. We're not being inconsistent or ignorant about translation problems or errors with Greek and Hebrew. No, you got to understand this. Because of your Greek and Hebrew, you would have the audacity to actually tell, to tell a kid, El Hanan killed Goliath. That's right. Like, what in the world? What in the world? So, you got to understand this. Greek and Hebrew, we, there is overwhelming manuscript evidence that supports the King James Bible e anyway. So those guys are lying again. Yeah, right. <laughs> now look at 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Isn't this confusion right here what's going on? Yeah. It's not consistency, it's confusion. By the way, if you have over 200 modern versions, that's so confusing. Yeah. And you have to debate... Which Bible is the best for me? Why is it you would go to a bookstore and say, which version is the best for me? You wouldn't ask that if you weren't confused to begin with. If you were clear and concise and you knew which book it is, then you know what to get. You wouldn't be confused and saying, well, which Bible should it be? God is not the author of confusion, you got to understand. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Chapter 14. And we will read right here chapter 14 and verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we will read verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Now there was a person who used to attend our church, and he did not believe that different Bibles were a big deal. And I just simply told him, okay, um, God is not the author of confusion according to this verse. Yes? He said, yes. And then I said, then who is the author of confusion? He said, the devil. I said, that's right. So who is the author then of all this confusion, folks? That's good. It's, make up your mind and be honest. It's Satan. That's the reason why Satan is of modern Bibles. And we don't believe in those modern Bibles. We only believe the King James Bible, that is the perfect, pure words of God. All the other Bibles are trash, you got to understand. Amen. They are absolute trash Amen. because they make our God a liar multiple times. 